Hi, I'm Jim Covington. Today is August 6, 2015. I'd like to welcome you to this week's issue of ISBA State House Review. Um, the governor has been receiving bills from the legislature from the spring session, and the drop dates will probably all end no later than the end of this month, and we'll go through bills that uh, he has signed into law that have been sent to him. This week we're going to talk about three bills and then four juvenile justice bills. Uh, the first bill is uh, Public Act 99-265, uh, amending the Court Security Fee Act, uh, part of the county's code. It's introduced by Senator Bill Hayne from Alton and Representative Don Moffat from Galesburg, and it allows a court security fee to exceed $25 uh, per filing on civil litigants and convicted defendants if it is set according to an acceptable cost study under the county's code. That will take effect on January 1, 2016. Right now it's capped at 25. This uncaps it if there is an acceptable cost study done. The next uh, public act is Public Act 99-190, introduced by Representative uh, Scott Drury from Highwood and uh, Chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Kwame Raoul from Chicago and it implements the Vienna Convention of 1969 to which the United States is a party to. It requires that a law enforcement officer in charge of custodial facilities ensure that a foreign national is advised within 48 hours of booking or detention that he or she has the right to communicate with the appropriate consulate as required by the Vienna Convention. That takes effect January 1, 2016. That is already the law in all 50 states of the United States, uh, but this sort of lays out a framework, you know, how to do it uh, to make it as simple and easily as possible to do. And it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's designed to be sort of a blanket admission, uh, admonition, pardon me. Uh, the law enforcement officer is under no duty to investigate whether or not the defendant is a foreign national. And at the initial appearance, uh, the judge is also required to give the same blanket admonition. The next act is Public Act 99-12, amending speeding and supervision. It's introduced by Representative Walsh from Joliet and uh, Senator John Mulrow from Chicago. And it does four things, if I understand this uh, act correctly, because it was difficult to read. Um, a lot of times when they amend a statute, they just keep adding and subtracting instead of starting all over, um, which I understand why it's done that way. Uh, so you don't cause new problems, but it's sometimes difficult to read. It was for me, but as I understand it, it creates the offense of aggravated special speed limit for going 26 miles or an hour, but less than 35, which is a class B misdemeanor, and for going 35 or more in a school zone or highway construction zone, which is a class A misdemeanor. Both of those are for the school zone or construction zone. It prohibits supervision for aggravated speed in a highway construction zone. It doesn't change the blanket prohibition against the supervision for speeding in a school zone. The third thing it does is it allows supervision to give, be given for going 26 miles, m more miles per hour or more over the posted speed limit if the driver has never been convicted of this offense or has ever been given supervision for it. And the fourth and final thing it does is it prohibits supervision from being given if you're driving more than 26 miles an hour over the posted speed limit if that occurs in an urban district. That too is effective January 1, 2016. Now the four bills amending juvenile justice, this has been a what, what I would call a LeBron James triple-double uh, year for the advocates of juvenile justice. The, the governor has signed and the legislature has passed four different bills amending juvenile justice. The first one is Public Act 99-69, introduced by Representative Barbara Flynn Curry of Chicago, Senator Don Harmon of Oak Park, and it codifies the U.S. Supreme Court's holding in Miller v. Alabama that a mandatory sentence of natural life without parole to a person under 18 years of age is a violation of the Eighth Amendment's cruel and unusual punishment clause. Uh, this bill's application is prospective and only, and it's effective January 1, 2016. The second juvenile justice bill amends the Transfer uh, Act and it's Public Act 99-258 introduced by Representative Elaine Neckritz from Buffalo Grove and uh, Senator Kwame Rao of Chicago. It ends automatic transfer to adult court for minors under 15 and expands the discretion of juvenile court judges to make a transfer decision for children ages 16 through 17 through an individualized review of each minor's case. 
That two takes effect January 1, 2016. The third bill is Public Act 99-254, uh, amending the juvenile justice pension. It's introduced by Representative Robin Gable from Evanston and Senator Heather Staines from Chicago, and it prohibits a child under the age of 13 from being detained in a detention facility unless a local youth service provider has been contacted who has been unable to accept the child. That takes effect on January 1, 2016. The fourth and final juvenile justice bill is Public Act 99-268, uh, introduced by Senator Kwame Raoul from Chicago and um, Chairman Elaine Neckritz of the uh, House Judiciary Committee, Buffalo Grove. And it ends the incarceration of children for misdemeanors, requires limits for juvenile parole terms, and other provisions to begin to right-size the population of incarcerated minors, which is very expensive. That takes effect on January 1, 2016. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week.